Hello and welcome to the Ridiculously Good VA Show with Tracy Daviero. If you are a virtual assistant or want to be one, this is the place to learn the tips and tricks you need to become a ridiculously good VA. I've been a part of the VA industry since 1998 and I'm excited to get to know you and help you build an amazing business. Let's go. Hey there, welcome to another episode of the podcast that teaches you how to be a ridiculously good virtual assistant. If you're stuck and need help moving forward, be sure to book a complimentary cut to the chase call with me so we can talk about the ways I can help you. You can book your call at yourvamentor.com slash chase. Today I want to talk about setting boundaries so that you can balance your work life and your home life. A very common topic for virtual assistants. Today's quote is from Stephen Hall. You do have choices about how you spend your time. Balancing what you need to do with what you want to do can lead to happiness and success. Being able to do what you want when you want absolutely is your choice. Let's go. Work-life balance. Some people are going to tell you there's no such thing. It's kind of sad if they think that, really. Don't believe them. There absolutely is work-life balance. It is, however, up to you to make it happen. Let's talk about what balance means to virtual assistants, or more specifically, moms who are VAs. It's no secret that a lot of VAs struggle with balance, but a lot of them don't. If you're young, or you're single, or married but you have no kids, or your kids are grown and have left home, or if you're retired, you may not have to worry as much about balance as those of us who have people around us all the time. Moms almost always ask me for help finding balance. I think balance means being able to do what you want when you want, just like the quote said. And for the mom seeking balance, we need to first talk about what you realistically need to seek. Think of the scales of justice. They're level, right? You can see the picture with equal amounts of weight on both sides. That's the justice system supposed to be level. (laughs) Haha, that's another story. But that is often the vision of balance that we have when we're thinking about it. But balance to me does not always mean equal sides, you know, not the same thing on both sides. Definitely not balancing a VA business and a home life. Those can be a lot more challenging. To me, it's a little bit more like a Cirque du Soleil show. Just stick with me if you haven't seen Cirque du Soleil. And in fact, I haven't except on TV. But you get the concept. People on stage, they're balancing a lot of things, more people jumping in and throwing you off balance while you're juggling or leaning or stretching and trying to stay upright, right? It might sound a little bit topsy-turvy, but that's really truer to what happens. And it's the big reason why a lot of virtual assistants can struggle with it. Who likes being thrown off balance all the time? Nobody, right? But we don't need equal amounts of work and home. What we need is to be able to adjust when the balance is thrown off. When someone new comes in the room or new work hits our desk or we're tired and we want to take a break or we want to eat a meal or we want to do some laundry. We want to take a phone call. A meeting goes too long. What are the things that we need to juggle and how can we achieve balance with those things, right? How can we do it? I'm going to talk to you today about boundaries. Boundaries, quite simply, are the rules that you put in place to make things run smoothly, or at least more smoothly, in your day. When we define what these boundaries are, it makes it easier for everyone to get the clarity they need to help you find the balance that you're looking for. Here are a few boundaries that can help you. Now I have a big long list, and I will just go as far as I can go on them. This might be a two-parter because I like boundaries, and I think they're really, really helpful. First one is office hours. I'm sure you hear people talk about office hours all the time, but I'm not talking about telling your clients that you work Tuesday afternoons and Monday to Thursday, nine to three or something like that. Letting your clients know generally when you work is totally fine. It's a great idea actually, but unless they need you to be available at certain times for some reason, a meeting, an event, something like that, it really shouldn't matter when you do their work. I always stated in my contract that I typically worked standard business hours, 9 to 5 Eastern, and that my office was closed evenings, weekends, and holidays. That really was enough of a client boundary for the most part. 
Of course, I'd let them know if I wasn't going to be in the office for a day or an afternoon or if I was going to be off sick. But in general, they knew that I was a full time VA, right? I was operating during business hours. Not everybody's going to do that. But when you're clear about it, it really helps them understand, you know, where you're coming from and maybe some of the boundaries that you'll put in place. Telling clients doesn't give them access to you anytime that they want. Just because they know that you work nine to five, Monday to Friday, doesn't give them the right to call a meeting at four o'clock or, you know, give you work that needs to be turned around inside of an hour at the end of your workday or the end of your week. I'll get to that in a few minutes. But it does set their expectation of when you work during the business day. Okay, got it, right? That's an expectation set by putting a boundary in place. Instead, when I talk about office hours, I'm more referring to your family and how you set that boundary for them. It's important. There's the, you know, the other side of that weird scale or Cirque du Soleil, right? If you have children at home with you, you know you need to work around their schedule, whatever that is. My son went to daycare when he was young and even later than that, he went to school. And of course, my work stopped and started around his leaving or arrival or pickup times. It's really important and it is likely one of the reasons that you want to work from home. However, it's totally essential that your family understands something. All of your family. Kids are very smart, so I want you to understand that they can grasp this concept, okay? They all need to understand that in order to have mommy around, mommy needs to get her work done. And I know that sounds terribly condescending, but I absolutely mean it. It, it, it is condescending. That's the way I mean it to sound. You can totally work with your family schedule as long as you book in office time to get your business stuff completed. That might mean working early in the morning or late at night, but it also means figuring out when to work when your family is home, in your home with you. At my house, I do my creative work in the morning. It's That's my good time of day to do it. And of course, that's one of the things you need to figure out too. But I do it before anybody else wakes up. I'm lucky my family's in the restaurant industry, so they don't get up at 6 a.m. Never, ever. And so I can get so much writing done in the peace and quiet, right? That's when I really find if I focus on it, I can get a lot, like really large loads of writing and creative stuff done when I'm concentrating and I can really do that. I know when my husband and son get up, then I prioritize having coffee and breakfast or lunch with them. And that is a really important thing for me as well. Then I go back to work until they come home again if they're going out to work or until I take a break and I go back upstairs and visit with them again. Or maybe we head out to you know, the grocery store, or we go in the pool, or we go and do some work in the backyard, whatever it is, right? But the more I work, the happier everybody is because I'm earning more money. So the work part is really, really important. And I tell them when I have meetings or when I'm recording my podcasts or my trainings, so they need to be quiet. Group text actually is uh, one of my favorite things. I don't even have to leave my office to tell them I'm about to start recording. And they help me by being quiet when I need them to be. They can do it. Everybody can do it. Okay. We split the household duties. Um, Just because I'm home doesn't mean that I'm the one who needs to cook and clean and do the laundry. And I think a lot of moms who stay home think that they need to take over those two, you know, all of that stuff as well. Now, if I can, of course, I try to pop in a load of laundry while I work. But if I don't, it's no big deal. I just do it at night when I used to when I worked outside the home. Nothing has to be done at a different time of day simply because you're home. So office hours is the time you need to be in the office to run your business or to do the business, right? To do the client work and that kind of thing. In my house, that happens to be different every day because my family works shift work. Back when I was only working as a VA, my husband worked, you know, mostly Monday to Friday days and Friday night double. So I was able to work office hours and like regular standard business hours all the time. Now, my husband and my son both work shift work. So they are some, you know, there's always kind of someone here, right? And it makes it really simple for me to figure out. I know I need to know when they work so that I can 
tell them when I'm working as well. And we try to coordinate that the best that we can. I think it's very flexible. We can make things work any, you know, anything that we want. I do typically still work standard business hours, but I do take lots of time with my family when they're home. And then, you know, if I need to pick up some work at night um, or work when they're working too, that's what I do. And that works for us. And whatever you decide is going to work for you too. The important thing is to sort out when you're working and get your family to support that. The clarity is key. When they know mama has a call or mama will be done at two, they call me mama here. Um, if you want to get some focused work time, maybe you just say, I've, I've got to go down and work for a couple of hours, you know, or an hour or whatever it is. They know the boundary and they can adhere to it. I want you to try it if you haven't done it, especially if you're struggling to work and be there for your family. Identify the things that you can do to put some office hours in place. It, does, it might not be the same hours every day and it might not be like a full schedule where you can break it out and, and have it standardized all the time. But just try it a little bit and see how it works. And yes, it may be, you know, may mean a couple of disappointed little faces for an hour or two sometimes, but everybody is still going to be better for it because you can stay working from home. And obviously, if your kids aren't old enough to stay out of your office for an hour or two um, so that you can get that focus time, you may need another solution, right? You may need to your focus time at another time, like when people are sleeping or something like that. But you're going to struggle with balance unless you figure that out. If you need help, let's brainstorm it. I can help you figure it out. When my son was young, I sent him to daycare in the mornings because I literally, he was awake all morning, nine to one, I sent him every single day. And um, because if he was here, I couldn't get anything done. He just, you know, he was an only child and so he needed me and that's okay. That's, you know, he's my kid, it's okay. Um, but I could work interrupted when I sent him to daycare and then I picked him up after lunch. And you better believe that I got four solid hours of work done while he was gone and so that I didn't have to keep working whenever he came home. That was my balance. I worked really hard. I found ways to be efficient and, you know, I worked with clients who needed things that I could produce like that in, in that four, hour, four hours a day. And I learned quickly that preparing my schedule the night before for the following day helped tremendously and I could really max out the four hours when he was gone. And then when he got home, he napped or not, and I was available for him and we played and we had fun and we, you know, had dinner and we did all that kind of stuff. And then oftentimes I would work another couple of hours, either after everybody went to bed or, you know, I'd get up the next morning and I would get some things done as well. Didn't matter when that was, but so I was billing my clients for six hours a day with my son only in daycare for half a day. And at the time, I don't know what daycare costs anymore, guys. This was a long time ago, but it cost me, I think, $10, you know, for the half a day, right? Or it's probably, it was 10 or 15 anyway, but it was so worth it. I was billing six hours a day. At the time, I was charging $25 an hour. So I was bringing in $3,000 a month for my client work easily. And so it covered the daycare, and it, you know, got me working, which was a really good thing. And it helped me to build my business. Not bad, eh? A dedicated workspace. This one to me is a no brainer and it is a boundary that is mostly for you. Let me explain. Find a place in your home where you can work. Preferably not a family space like the living room or the dining room table. If you have a room you can use that you can close the door to at the end of the night or the end of the day, um, preferably, like I said, not something in the middle of the house, you want to be able to stop work. Okay, if you don't have an office space, it's okay. You want to create something that closes. Okay, so whether that is, um, if you're working on the dining room table, a box of files that closes at the end of the day, a laptop that goes into a bag, something like that, right? Something to close your work day. If you're constantly leaving things around on the dining room table, it's just enticing to, oh, I'll just do one more thing and pop over and really, you know, smear that line between family and work. Or if you sit with your laptop all evening on the couch, not only is it easy to putter at things all night long, you're spending unfocused time on your work, right? Which means it's taking you a lot longer to do the things that you're doing because of all the distractions around you. And maybe you're involved in conversation or getting up to, you know, get snacks and that kind of thing. You feel like you're present with your family, um, but really you're just taking a really long time to get your work done while you're hanging out with them. And your family is going to feel like you're splitting your attention, that you're working all the time. 
You've probably heard me tell the story of my husband saying that when I used to do my puttering on the couch every evening, I thought, oh, I'm done my client work, but I'm going to, I have all kinds of other things to do. I had to work on my own graphics, my blog posts, my newsletter, that kind of thing. And I did it while we hung out in the evening. I wasn't doing client work. So I, in my head, knew that I wasn't really working, but it was regarding my business, of course. But he and my son both said, you work all the time. And they were right. It didn't even dawn on me what their perception was until they, you know, sort of voiced it. So instead, I dedicate my work time to my office and close the door when it was done. And I promise you, you will work far better focused if you have a dedicated place to work. And you are actually going to fully enjoy your family time too, because that door is closed and work is done for the day. Balance comes from how your family perceives your business too. And if they feel that when you used to work outside the home and you were able to leave your job there, that you were 100% home for them, they may voice their disappointment when you now seem to be working all the time. It doesn't always seem, you know, it's not always as it seems. In my experience, a dedicated office space can be a really simple boundary that you have to hold yourself to so that you can both clearly understand that work time is over. It's really about you. Next is lead times. This is a really key one to balance, believe it or not. Setting lead times for work to be done for clients is really important. Not everything they need is urgent. Some of it isn't even important. Much of it does not need to be done right now. But that's where we, that's where the way we feel, right? When they give us work to do or when they send us something that they need done, we feel like we want to turn it around right away. Doesn't help with your balance, I'll tell you that. And that's where lead times can come into play. A lead time is just the amount of time that you have between when a client sends you a request to work or, you know, the pieces to something to do and when you deliver it to them. Lead time. It leads up to the deadline or the due date. I actually don't know if that's the definition of it, but that's how I've always thought about it. Maybe I should look it up. But it is really important to how much time do you have from the time you get it till the time you can complete it. And yes, that could be also considered a turnaround time, but a turnaround time is sort of, I get it, I produce it, and I turn it right back around to you as quickly as I can. And lead times is not always about quick, you know, quickly, it's about scheduling and managing your schedule. It's really, really a different concept. Much of the issue with our balance comes because of last minute client work. Think about it. How many times a day do you check your email to see what your clients need? Some VAs I know check all day long. They actually leave their notifications on and they go and check it every single time that bell rings, right? I'm here to tell you that this is not a productive way to work. It's disruptive. It takes up so much of your time to switch between tasks every time you hear that bing or see that pop up. So instead, I challenge you to turn off your notifications and set an alarm on it or a calendar, like an alarm on your phone or a calendar pop up to remind you now is the time to go and check your email. Keep out of it until it is the time that you're scheduled for yourself to go and check. I maintain that checking email three times a day is more than sufficient for most VAs. Of course, there are exceptions to every rule, I understand. But if you consciously make an effort to only check email three times a day, you're going to focus your time so much better on the actual work that you need to get done, even if you do email management as a task. And you're going to be a lot more organized in managing your schedule properly. Clients should not be allowed to send you unexpected same day work, okay? Lead times are essential for your clients. Work that they need to have done the same day is what I'm talking about. They aren't paying you at a rate that allows them instant access to you. And even if you're only working with two big clients, say they pay you a lot and you think that, well, they need this, so I need to get it done. You aren't supposed to work for them like you have a job, like you are their employee. Okay. You're running a business and every client is important and you need lead times to manage everyone's expectation around your work pace and turnaround times. I used to tell my clients that I needed at least 24 hours of lead time for work requests. Even if someone had a weekly newsletter that I produced for them, I needed the copy and pieces for it the day before it was to be sent so that I could fit it into my schedule and get it done by their deadline. At first, some of your clients might struggle with the concept, but once they get into it, I promise you it absolutely works. Clarity again is key. It allows you to manage your own schedule. For instance, client A's newsletter gets published or sent out every Thursday morning at 11 o'clock. 
Maybe this week I'd work on their newsletter on Wednesday because I have a bunch of meetings books booked on Thursday with my other clients. Maybe next week though I'll do it on Thursday morning. It's up to me and as long as it goes out on time for the client's deadline I get to manage my schedule and the lead time helps me do that. Some of you might want more than 24 hours. That's totally fine too. I had a VA one time who sent me a proposal and said that she needed 72 hours of lead time for every task that she did. And I thought, oh, I can't work with that person. Totally okay. Totally within her right to tell me that's what she needed. And totally okay for me to say, that's not going to work for me. 24 hours, I think, is always still, you know, quite standard and um, understandable for a lot of people. So when a client sends you a work task, ask them, when does it need to be done? And schedule it into your calendar accordingly, right? Not everything's urgent, not everything's important. And then be really conscious of your work pace so that you can get done as efficiently as possible. I said it again, work pace, that's my second time. I could do an entire episode on work pace. I'm not gonna get into it today, but to the, it is so important to the success of your business and to achieve that balance that you're craving to really work on your work pace. Be really aware of it and manage it very, very well. Um, that's all I'm going to say in this episode. Remember, this is not a job. I know I've said that already. You're running a business and you have a lot of balls in the air. You need to teach your clients to give you enough time to get your work done and you're both going to be happier for it. So those are three really simple boundaries to put in place for yourself, your clients and your family. And as I said earlier in the episode, when you're clear about your boundaries, everybody understands them quickly and it makes everything so much easier for all of you. The business is the thing that is allowing you to work from home and set your own schedule and set your own rates. So even though your family will always be more important than any business you run, it's still important to put the business first at very clear times so that you can use it to build the lifestyle that you want. And you can balance the work with the family easily. You just have to choose how. And on that note, I want to revisit our quote from today. You do have choices about how you spend your time. Balancing what you need to do with what you want to do can lead to happiness and success. Who doesn't want happiness and success? I sure do. You have choices about how you spend your time. We all do. You can choose to play now, and then you'll have to get the work done at some point. And sometimes that is the right option. I'll give you another example. My son is not a toddler anymore. He actually just turned 26. Oh my Lord. You know what he really loves? Mimosa Tuesdays. When he's off on a Tuesday, he likes to sit and drink mimosas with me in our kitchen and talk sports or movies or life or whatever. So we do. Sometimes. Not every Tuesday, but sometimes. So on those Tuesdays, Mimosa Tuesdays, I get my work done as soon as I can. Just like I used to when I knew he was coming home from daycare after lunch. And then I sit and I have mimosas with them. But on a regular basis, it's the boundaries that are in place that help everybody. As I mentioned, my husband and son both work shift work. They're chefs in a restaurant, so their schedule changes from week to week. And that's why having a flexible schedule is important for me. Just like it's important for you, you have your reasons as well. Lay out your regular boundaries and set the expectations for everyone. And you're going to enjoy that happiness and success, both. As usual, I didn't get through all of my list. I have a lot more to say about this, but I'm going to leave it here for today. Thank you so much for listening. I will definitely see you next time. If you need help figuring out how to bring balance into your VA business and your home life, get in touch with me. I'm here to help. It's the only reason I'm here at all, as you know, to help you become a ridiculously good VA. I've helped hundreds of VAs who are stuck get moving, and I'd love to do the same thing for you. We can work together privately through group coaching or private self-study free and paid trainings. I have lots of ways I can help you. Just reach out so we can talk about what you need. Thanks again for tuning in this week. I'll see you next time. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the Ridiculously Good VA Show. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss a thing. For more great resources for your VA business, visit my website at yourvamentor.com. I'll see you back here next time.